It was near the end of World War I, and the French finally realized that two wings were not in fact better than one. So the Moraine Saulnier Company rushed to rectify that misconception. The result would be the parasol-winged AI. It proved to be fast and maneuverable. That is, until the wings ripped off. At 83 inch wingspan, this is over 30% the size of the real one. Suitable for both glow and electric power. Will it shorten that trip to Tipperary? Well, only one way to find out. Before I could take up La Aeroplane, I first needed to test run the engine. Fueled up and switched on, it's time to crank her up. Choke on, of course. Then press the button, Frank. Hmm, auto shut off kicked in. Ah, there we go. Now choke off and see if she fires. The EME engine ran great right out of the box with very little adjustment needed. After a bit of running, I whipped out the tachometer for some numbers. Top end speed seemed reasonable. It had about 6600 RPM. Unfortunately, the muffler decided not to get with the program. Bugger. The original lock washers weren't so locky. So I decided to try out some Nord lock washers at the recommendation of some viewers. They are two separate parts that key together. Interesting. Unfortunately, they didn't fit in the slots. So I ground them down a bit with my belt sander. Let's hope that works. Out of the field, I warmed up with a little shock cub action. After that distraction, it was time to fire up the AI. Okay, we've got the Marine Saulnier. We are going to take her up and see what she can do. All right, so first step is uh, choke on. We'll see if we prime her up, hit the start. First one, no, usually the second time it'll do it. There we go, that's what I like to see. And now, third time's a charm. Yeah, baby. She's up and running. I'm gonna give it a moment to warm up a bit. This EME engine is running really well. Very little need to touch the needle valves since I run it. I think I reached it up just a touch after breaking in a couple of runs. Check the controls, right, left, up, down, rifle standard, left rudder. Does it idle? One last pre-flight check. Which almost pulled me off my feet. All right, <laughs> she's got a lot of pull. <laughs> All right, guys, no more excuses, let's take her up. Say well, she'll taxi. The AI turned well enough despite the non-steerable tail skid. But enough playing around, let's fly this thing. All right, here goes nothing. And she's up, yes. I kind of let the tail get up naturally. Get the tail into the slipstream. And she's up, flying nicely. There's a little bit of down trim. There we go. Engine is singing along quite nicely. And flying quite nicely as well. Let's bring her in. Look at that. Half throttle, flies beautifully. Very easy. 
That's on high rates. I'm going to go to low rates. The AI looked great in the air and was quite nimble. Around. She's actually quite responsive. The engine ran like a top and had lots of excess power. If a bit loud. So the trim's looking good. We'll do another low pass. Yeah, look at that. Really nice handling plane, really easy, smooth. All right, so let's take her up and see what she can do. Try some aerobatics. Does a nice roll. I was on high rate. Kicked the tail over. It also likes a bit of rudder in the turns. Opposite direction. Fairly axial rolls. Let's do a stall turn. Ha, ah, nice. Want to get some altitude? I'll test the stall. Keeps the momentum up pretty good. Using some up elevator, more up, more up, more up, more up, more up, more up. It's about full up right there. That's full up. A little bit of rudder to compensate. Ah, nice. Not a problem. Inverted. It flies inverted. <laughs> It's okay. It's protesting slightly because it's a parasol wing, but it's all right. I dare say I was quite enjoying this very non-scale maneuver. Try to, oh. <laughs> Try to do an outside loop, didn't quite like that. It's all right. <laughs> All right, right, that, 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 Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I like the snaps. But will it knife edge? Whoa! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Ooh, that rudder has some bite to it. Ha! <laughs> Got a little bit of cross coupling. The rudder's surprisingly effective, actually. It's throwing me off. There we go. Kind of, sort of, takes quite a bit of balancing. All right, that's fun, let's bring her in. I quickly found out that the AI likes a bit of throttle on approach, but we'll eventually settle in for a nice three-pointer. Very nice. I think I like this, I think it's a lot. It's a big mother. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna make that turn. Ah ha! I'm stuck. Ha ha! Yeah, four-wheel drive. There we go. Fantastic. A very good flight. Even the peanut gallery was impressed. <laughs> but I wasn't the only one out to fly their AI. Okay, so not only was I able to fly mine, but Larry Holtman is here with me again. After back he, again. yes, back again. After you, you, you really let me uh, come to your workshop and see you build this, right, and it's right. it's done. It's done. It, it came looks, a long way since she was at the shop. Yes, it looks fantastic. I mean, I'm jealous. Mine is like you know, factory fresh looking. And <laughs> yours look like it's seen some action. Well, I came through and did a little bit of the 
small techniques to it to make it look one off and one was I recessed the guns into the fuselage so they're not standing on top so much. Yes. And I see you got some like weathering. Did you uh, paint yeah, this with airbrush? Yeah, I do a lot of airbrush work on most of my planes and it just gives it a one-off look. Give it, it the good it, weather beaten look. It, it looks a, great. This is a Polish version. Yes, I see the markings are quite a bit different. Yeah. Uh, but it, very, it looks like it's easy to see in the air, so. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yes. So um, this will be your main flight. You haven't main flown it yet, flight. right? Yeah, I haven't flown it yet. And the engine you're using again is uh, on this, this one? This is a, a RCGF Stinger 40 Twin. Oh, the 40 Twin. That's the same one I have in my shot cub. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. Oh, wow. So that'd right. be interesting. And I've been really impressed with the numbers and the startup and the adjustment so far. So, so that's good. Yeah, even though mine's got quite a bit more, a bit more power, yeah. I don't need it. I've, yeah. My flights are half throttle. Yeah, I noticed on your flight for third third power and yeah. just to kind of cruise and then full power to do any kind of radical maneuver. Yes. So I'm really interested to see how this flies. I know I like the it's RC. It's going to fly scale. We're going to do no inverted flight. <laughs> like you, oh, come on. Live a little. Uh, one last thing, the pilot. I couldn't uh, help but notice well, the pilot's a little know, different. The kit comes with that pilot that it has, but yeah. that, that just offset me on the airplane. I didn't didn't like it too So you well, had to so. give it a personal touch. So I went and had a Matt Chapman third scale pilot sitting on the shelf. And uh, I looked at them, and I stuck them in the airplane, and I thought, you know, that's probably a pretty good size, third scale. So I chopped his earmuffs off, I bondoed the helmet up on top, shaped it with a Dremel tool, <laughs> gave it the look that we have, made him a set of goggles out of Bondo, and gave it a one-off look, and it really came out good. That's great. You get an own personal touch. So we call that Senior Pappy. Senior Pappy. Senior, El Senior Pappy. Pappy. All right. Well, without any further ado, I uh, look forward to seeing how this goes. We're so getting cranked up. Let it warm up a little All bit. right. Well, good luck. Thank you. All right. Of course, Larry had to use his hands. How quaint. Once running, it sounded great. Larry's takeoff run was a bit longer, but very scale like. Like me, Larry quickly found his groove. Once on step, the smaller 40cc engine performed admirably. though his landing was a bit less dignified. With two Saulniers at the field, we couldn't resist a bit of formation flying. Those pesky Germans won't stand a chance. Let's just hope we don't try to occupy the same space at the same time. And we're off! At first, our formation was a bit laissez-faire. But we eventually tightened it up quite nicely. After some hun hunting fun, it was time to end our little patrol. I flew cover while Larry settled in first. Ah, much better than last time. Not bad myself. But I seem to have a bit of a gun issue. Oh well, at least he's back in one piece. Uh, so, some Marine Sonar AIs continue to be flown after the war as trainers and even personal aircraft, including being flown by famed French ace Charles Nungesser. Uh, so, one really bored chap used one to set the world record for consecutive loops, uh, reportedly over 900. Yeesh. Uh, anyways, 
Uh, as you saw, this uh, model Mademoiselle flew quite nicely. Uh, it was a really fun build, and I'm quite impressed with the engineering that went into the kit. I was a bit concerned when I measured it about 34 pounds, uh, but she handled the weight quite nicely. Uh, now, the Auto Start EME engine uh, is magnifique. Okay, I'll stop with the uh, bad French. Uh, but I'm extremely spoiled by that uh, feature. Uh, and also, the, 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 the loose muffler screws aside, I think the engine is a powerhouse and very reliable. I had not a tick of problem with it. Uh, plus, look at that prop. Yeah, look at that. That's great. So anyways, I'll admit that I do have a soft spot for World War I aircraft, especially ones with uh, some extra charm and character like this AI, uh, which uh, despite being a somewhat lesser known model, is definitely a great addition to my fleet. It's a long way to Tipperary, it's a long way to go.